So up to this point we've covered a few of the identities associated with sigma notation and a few of the properties that we have to be able to use when working, simplifying and calculating these. What we're going to look at here is proving two key identities when it comes to sigma notation, namely the sum of r and the sum of r squared up to a set number of terms. But to do this we have to make sure we remember the previous rules that we had in the last video. So what we know already is that the sum of r equals 1 to n of just 1 on its own is equal to n. That there is a given identity to us that we should remember off the top of our head. There's two other key ones that we need to be able to work with. We need to know the sum from r equals 1 to n of r on its own, and then the sum from r equals 1 to n of r squared. So what are both of those? Now each of these has their own identity, we have to be able to not only remember these identities, but be able to prove them. We have to know where they come from, how they get there, and what it is we have to do to get them. So let's look at the first one. Let's imagine I ask myself, right, if I have the sum from r equals 1 to n of r, what formula do I use to get that? Well, in order to do this, what we need to do is we need to bring back in some of the other rules that we need to remember from before. So we may need to bring in, for example, sum of r equals 1 to n of 1, what that is. We may need to bring in a couple of rules when working with sum of f of r plus 1, take away the sum of f of r. Several rules like that. We have to remember these so we can bring them into play when we want to. Now, let's imagine I want to look at the identity r plus 1 squared. And I know that if I was to multiply that out, that would be r squared plus 2r plus 1. Well, let's imagine what I'm going to do is take the sums of both sides. So I'm going to put both of them in a summation operation from r equals 1 to n on both sides of this identity. What I'm then going to do <coughs> is use what I know about rules of sigma notation and sums to be able to split this one up. So what I can then say is fine. So I know my sum from r equals 1 to n of r plus 1 squared equals the sum from r equals 1 to n of r squared plus 2 times the sum from r equals 1 to n of r plus the sum from r equals 1 to n of 1. So I've split that up there on the right. Now what we are after is figuring out how we get this but the issue is we've got a squared power here, and that can't be good for us. However, we've got a squared power here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect all the squared powers together on one side. So I'm going to shift this across to there. So when I do that, I can rewrite this whole left-hand side as my sum from r equals 1 to n of the r plus 1 squared, take away the sum from r equals 1 to n of r squared, and on this side, what I'm left with is 2 times the sum from r equals 1 to n of r, plus this here, so the sum from r equals 1 to n of 1. Well, I know from my properties and my identities before that that is just quite simply n. So I can just put that in in its place. Now, if we look at this side, if I was to tell you that f of r was equal to r squared, then f of r plus 1 is equal to r plus 1 squared. So what that means this left hand side is, is it takes the format of the sum of f of r plus 1, take away the sum of f of r. What that then means is I can rewrite that using the rule that I remember from my previous calculations. Now remember, when we did, we did this before, f of r plus 1 take away the sum of f of r, what we could do is we could rewrite that in such a way that we could rewrite it as f of n plus 1 take away f of 1. Now if this here is my f of r plus 1, so f of n plus 1 then for this case would quite simply give me n plus 1 squared, and then take away f of 1, which in this place is that, would give me 1. So my left hand side I can rewrite is n plus 1 squared, take away 1, and I know that that equals 2, 
times the sum from r equals 1 to n of r plus n. Now this is the part we want to get, so let's make this the subject of the formula. I get 2 times the sum from r equals 1 to n of r equals, well I'm going to shift the n across here, but I'm also going to multiply at the bracket. So that equals n squared plus 2n plus 1 minus 1 minus n, which I'm going to simplify and sort to give me n squared plus 1 minus 1 goes plus n. And I'm going to factorise it to give me n bracket n plus 1. What I'm then going to do is take the 2 across and divide by it. So what I'm able to say then is that therefore my sum from r equals 1 to n of r is given by a half n bracket n plus 1. So that there is the identity and the property that we can use if we've got the sum from r equals 1 to n of r, or any variable we want to use in its place. The other one we wanted to think about was if we were looking for the sum from r equals 1 to n of r squared. We want to know what that is. Well, we can prove that in similar fashion by picking an identity and starting with that. The difference is this time we're going to go one power higher again, so we're going to look at the identity r plus 1 cubed. When we multiply out the brackets there, so if we take r plus 1 cubed and multiply it out, we get r cubed plus 3r squared plus 3r plus 1. And what we're going to do is take the sums of both sides again. So I'm going to have the sum from r equals 1 to n of this left hand side, so the r plus 1 cubed equals this right hand side all summed up, so I'm going to then just jump ahead and do each term individually. So I can say fine, so it's the sum from r equals 1 to n of r cubed plus 3 times the sum r equals 1 <coughs> to n of r squared plus 3 times the sum of r from r equals 1 to n and then plus the sum from r equals 1 to n of just 1. Now we know what this is. We know what this is. This is what we want to find. This is the pain here because it's a power that's higher than the one that we're using. But similar to before, we've got that same highest power across here. So let's shift that over here and see what we can get. So if I move it across, what I'm going to be left with is the sum from r equals 1 to n of r plus 1 cubed. Take away the sum from r equals 1 to n of r cubed. Now this takes a similar format to what we had before, of f of n plus 1 take away f of n. And we get the same sort of answer. So we'll end up for this with n plus 1 cubed take away 1. So that is now going to be the left hand side of our calculation. So what we can then do is stick this all back in here and see what we can get from that. So I know then that my left hand side is going to be n plus 1 cubed take away 1 and that's going to equal 3 times the sum from r equals 1 to n of r squared plus 3 times my identity for r so it's going to give me 3 over 2 n bracket n plus 1 and then it's going to be plus my identity I know for this which is n. So again what we want to do is we want to know this so let's make that the subject of the formula so we get 3 times the sum from r equals 1 to n of r squared. What that equals is this side here. Let's multiply out this bracket here and simplify it. So if I multiplied it out, I'd take away 1. I'd have n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n. I'm then going to take all of this across here. So I'd have minus 3 over 2n squared minus 3 over 2n minus n. So I've just multiplied out this bracket as I've taken it across. What I can then do is simplify everything I've got on this side. So I end up getting 3 times the sum from r equals 1 to n of r squared. What that's equal to? Well I've got an n cubed term there. I've then got 3n squared take away 3 over 2n squared. So I get plus 3 over 2n squared there. I've then got plus 3n minus 3 over 2n minus an n, so I've then got plus a half n there on its own. What I'm going to do here then, is I'm going to do something a little bit strange when it comes to taking out a common factor. 
On this side, what I'm actually going to do is get rid of the fractions as I do it. So I'm going to take out a common factor of a half n. So what that's then going to give me is on the right hand side, I'm going to be left with a half n bracket. Well, to counteract that 2 there, I'm going to have to put 2n squared, for what my first term has become, plus 3n plus 1. So I'm then going to divide through by 3, and I'll get that the sum from r equals 1 to n of r squared is equal to 1 sixth n times this bit here in the bracket, what I've got. But what I can do is factorise that as a trinomial, and I get 1 over 6n bracket n plus 1 bracket 2n plus 1. And that there is the formula we use for if we've got the sum from r equals 1 to n of r squared. Slightly more complex formula than before for the sum of r, but it's still easily as provable. We just have to remember the identity to take it to start, which is this bad boy here. So all three properties that we need to remember are given here. Sum from r equals 1 to n of 1 is just n. Sum from r equals 1 to n of r equals a half n bracket n plus 1. And the sum from r equals 1 to n of r squared is equal to 1 sixth n bracket n plus 1 bracket 2n plus 1. So we've got those three there. We need to be able to use all three of these here in order to be able to manipulate expressions involving sums and calculations and be able to get an answer that we're after. So let's look at an example of that. Let's imagine I want you to express as a function of n without the sigma notation this here. So we have to use all of those rules in order to split it up and all the rules that we remember from before to do that. So if I split this up and use the rules that I had before, I end up getting 4 times the sum from r equals 1 to n of r squared plus 2 times the sum from r equals 1 to n of r take away 2 times the sum from r equals 1 to n of 1. And I have to use each of the identities in order to be able to then work each of these through. So what I get is I get 4 sixths n bracket n plus 1 bracket 2n plus 1 for the first part plus 2 times a half n bracket n plus 1 for the second part then simply take away 2n for the third part of the expression right here. What you now have to do is when you get one like this, you have to make sure that you simplify it down. In order to do that, all I'm going to do is multiply each of the sets of brackets, gather all the like terms together, and simplify it as much as possible. So this first term, I'm going to have 4 over 6n bracket 2n squared plus 3n plus 1. The second one here, 2 times a half is just going to disappear. So I'm going to end up with plus n squared plus n minus 2n here. What I then do, multiply out this bracket here by the 4 over 6. Remember, 4 over 6 is simplified to 2 thirds. So what I'd end up getting here is I'd end up getting 4n cubed over 3 plus 2 thirds n times 3n plus 2n squared plus 2 thirds n, plus n squared. I've then got a plus n minus 2n, take away n from there. So now all I do is I gather all the like terms and I see what I'm left with. So I've got 4 thirds n cubed. I've then got plus 2n squared plus an n squared. So I've got plus 3n squared there. I've then got plus 2 thirds n, take away n. I've then got minus 1 third n. Now we can simplify that if we can, so I can take out a common factor, let's say of a third n, so I'd have one third n bracket 4n squared plus 9n take away 1. And if you could, you could simplify that, but if you were to do your discriminant b squared minus 4ac, it would be negative, so I can't for this case. So this sort of question there, using these rules that we just came up with, we are able to exclusively write something in terms of n, so that if I was to give you an upper limit of it, let's say n was equal to 10, you could simply substitute it in there and tell me exactly what the value would be. So the benefit of doing this, it saves us going through all the steps and all the working and calculating each term out. There's a lot more we have to do, but this is your starter.